Okay, in this video, we are going to look at getting started with LoRa. Now, LoRa is a long-range, low-power radio platform using spread spectrum radio modulation. In this case, it uses CSS modulation, which is chirp spread spectrum, which trades data rate for sensitivity to give it its long range. Now, to start out getting started with LoRa, you have to get yourself a LoRa module, and this is the one I picked here. This is the E32, and it's made by eBite. That's a manufacturer. And the part number is 915T30D. Now the 30 in the part number means 30 dBm, so this is a 1 watt output. So we have 1 watt output on the SMA connector. So we have 1 watt RF energy into a 50 ohm load. So this is a pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful module. Now there's no micro involved, so there's no coding. So if you're not into coding, don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to hook it up to a FTDI, and we're going to communicate it through the UART. So we'll be just using our keyboard. So it's a one watt output. It has a UART, there's seven pins, and on those seven pins is our UART, transmit and receive. It has an auxiliary output, which is this LED here. It tells you when it's busy, when it's transmitting or receiving. Also when the buffer uh, is getting full, if you're sending uh, ASCII code into the module, if the buffer is getting full, the, the, uh, this auxiliary LED will come on. So this, this has a range of about eight kilometers. So around five miles, and a lot, there's lots of variables involved with range, but they have they claim it's going to it could uh, has a range of eight kilometers or five miles. Now it runs on five volts. So here's my four, five volt regulator, and the communication pins run on 3.3 volts. So I have my FTDI, that's my my USB to serial uh, jumper for for 3.3 volts, and that's communicating uh, with the UART. So I plug my um, my USB into my computer and I could run a serial terminal program and I could send it ASCII character codes which will be transmitted out of the module. So I'll hook it up to my computer and we'll send some ASCII character codes through the LoRa module. Okay, I have my LoRa radio powered up with 5 volts and I have my FTDI module plugged into my computer through the USB port and I'm running a serial terminal program called TerraTerm so on my keyboard I could send ASCII codes into the UART of the LoRa module. Now anytime there's a there's a character in the buffer it'll automatically transmit until a buffer is empty then it will stop transmitting. So as long as there's, there's characters in the buffer the LoRa module will transmit. So I'll send it some characters. I'll, I'll press some keys on my keyboard. You can see the LED come on. That's the auxiliary LED. You have to hold down the key. So every time I press a key the burst that you see is, is the ASCII character code being transmitted. Now this switch here is, is my mode switch. There's actually four modes to the module. Uh, one of the modes is a, a sleep mode, a program mode, and there's two other modes. So we could actually go into a program mode and we could run uh, uh, some software that we could get into the module and we could pro program parameters for the LoRa radio. Okay, I have my programming software up and running on my computer. Now this software is made by eBite. That's the company who makes the module and it's a free download. So right now I have the module connected up to the FTDI which is connected to the UART of the LoRa module and it's on COM58 so if I open the port and get parameters it's going to read all the parameters of the module. And you can see there the UART rate is set for 9600 bits per second. So that's the UART on board the module. So we could set it for whatever speed we want. And there's the parity. There's 8 bits, no parity, one stop bit. And this is our over the air rate. So we could change that. I have it set for 2400 bits per second. And the RF power output, it's set for 30 dBm. That's 1 watt. We could actually turn it down if you want. So that will cut down on the power consumption. Forward error correction, we could turn that on or off. There's a fixed mode or a broadcast mode. There's a wake up radio preamble mode where, it's, where it sends a preamble of 250 milliseconds to, to actually wake up uh, a, another module in the field to communicate with it. And then there's IO mode. That's our IO, IO pins could be either open drain or push pull. And over to the right, we can see we set our address. That, so every LoRa module will have a unique address. We could set our address there. 
and that's the channel number. So that's a frequency that the, the lower module is operating on. So right now it's on 950 megahertz. So we could, we, could, we could configure that to anywhere between 902 to 928 megahertz in the ISM band. So it's pretty uh, simple. After we set up all our parameters, we just set set parameter, and now we'll program that into the module, and then we're set to go. Now if you want to monitor the signal output of your LoRa radio, you get one of these. This is a software-defined radio. It's a USB dongle. You just plug this into your computer, run some software, and you could actually monitor the signal output of your LoRa radio. So I'll plug this into my computer, run some software, and I'll press some keys on the keyboard so it will key up the transmitter and we can monitor the output of this LoRa radio. Okay, I have my software defined radio USB dongle plugged into my computer. And I'm running some software called SDR Sharp and I have it tuned to 915 megahertz so we can monitor the output of the LoRa radio. So I'll press some keys on my keyboard to send some ASCII character codes into the LoRa module. So I'm pressing the key. You can see it transmitting. The key that I'm pressing. If I hold the key down, you can see it's about 500 kilohertz wide. That's the bandwidth of the signal that the LoRa radio is sending out. So all you need is this software. It's it's free, and a USB dongle software-defined radio, and then you can monitor the output of your LoRa radio. Okay, here's my LoRa radio link. This is my peer-to-peer -peer link. I'm using two modules, so they'll communicate with each other. So whatever serial data I send into this FTDI connector will come out this FTDI connector five miles apart. So then I'll be using these antennas for testing. Now these antennas look like they're sleeve dipole antennas. And then I'll use my monopole ground plane antenna quarter wave ground plane antenna and we'll see what the difference is. So I'll hook this I'll hook one of the modules up to a watt meter and we'll see if we're if we're actually getting one watt out of this module. Okay I have the antenna output of my LoRa radio connected up to my watt meter and I'll press some keys on the keyboard to key up the transmitter and we'll see how much RF power we get out of the LoRa radio. So I'll press some keys <coughs> Now the 15 scale is the is the full scale 15 watt. So it looks so it looks like we're only getting about 0.4 watts out of the module. So I'll have to investigate why that's happening. We should be getting one watt as per the data sheet. But it looks like we're only getting about 0.4 watts. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the output of my LoRa radio and we could check some of the signaling, some of the LoRa signaling. So there's one character that I sent and we could see the squelch noise. That's the squelch of the radio at the very end. And this is the data. So in the very beginning we could see the preamble. There's eight up chirps. Then there's a down chirp. That's your sync. And the rest of it's data. So in there is the forward error correction, the CRC, and the character that we actually sent from the keyboard. So if I expand it, We can actually see the preamble. So there's our preamble. So there's our eight up chirps. And then we get a down chirp. That's our sync. And then the rest of it is data. So that's all, all our data in there until we come to the very end, which we'll see our squelch noise. So that's the end of the data. So that's one character being sent from the LoRa radio. Okay, so that's getting started with LoRa. So what you could do is get your own LoRa module, put it on a breadboard, power it up, get a software-defined radio, and you could actually monitor the output of your LoRa radio, and then send data back and forth between two LoRa modules. So this is just the beginning. So next is to hook up to a microcontroller and write some code for a real application. <laughs>